weather's finally warmed up and we've had a few decent rainstorms so the ground's uh, nice and wet which means that the pests have started to come out. I've had a look through the brassica cage and there's a lot of white fly starting to appear and the black fly all over the broad beans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it over today to try and kill them and I'm going to use uh, neem oil which is a natural insecticide. Uh, mix it 100 to 1 ratio with water and then just put a small amount of washing up liquid in there to act as an emulsifier so that the water and the oil mix together a little bit better. And the way the neem oil works is you can you can apply it as a drench so you just mix it pour it onto the soil the plant absorbs it it gets into the plant tissues and when the black fly white fly whatever eat it it uh, affects their hormone balances stops them reproducing it stops their eggs from maturing and it reduces their appetite they stop eating and also if you spray it onto them it can break down uh, their outer cells and it can also stop them breathing by covering them in a oily substance so I'm going to mix this up now give it a good shake and get to work on the broad beans because as you've seen from the initial bit of footage they're covered in black fly and what happens is the the ants actually protect the pests from uh, their natural predators because the ants feed on the honeydew which is a liquid that they produce when they're digesting the plants so it's a beneficial reaction for the ants. The ants protect the aphids, green fly, whatever, and then the ants get to feed on the byproduct. But by doing this, hopefully I should reduce the amount that are there and get on top of the situation before it gets too bad and I start losing crops. So I'm just going to have a bit of a go now. Here we go on the cabbage. And as you can see, that's where I uh, there's a load of white fly there, I just rubbed them off with my finger. But you can tell where they've been, they sort of make the leaves all curl up and you get sort of like a white mildewy, mildewy look to them. Let's see if we can see any. Can you see them there? I'm a bit down in focus. There you go, that's what we're trying to get rid of. Now what I'll do is I'll just rub them and then once I've been round and rubbed out as many as I can I'll just spray the rest with the neem oil solution and just try and get on top of the try and get on top of the problem. But as you can see, oh, I've got a nice hoverfly though, come to help me. So I came around yesterday and did this. And this is what's happened. These have all occurred today. I'm trying to find the hoverfly. <laughs> Hopefully the cabbages and whatnot are, are strong enough to survive a bit of an attack. And I've seen plenty of uh, hoverflies and ladybirds and whatnot. But they can't reproduce at the same speed as the uh, aphids. That's just about being diligent. <laughs> Trying to get on top of the problem before it gets too bad. It's a glorious Tuesday evening, the sun's just set in, it's lovely and cool and I'm going to start work on making the next batch or the next two batches of comfrey tea. These are off the plants on the second pot, I've just taken a few leaves off each plant and these are from the Bocking 14 that was in my back garden. I cut them down at the weekend obviously because it's been nice and warm, they've all started to rot down. So what I'm going to do is strip all the leaves off the stems. Stems are going in the compost bin. Leaves are going in here. And I'm going to fill them both up with water. 
I've not got a lid for the yellow tub, so I'm just going to put a slab on top of it and then put the second bucket on top of that and just leave them for a few months to work their magic. So I should just strip the leaves off there. Uh, I'm going to put a pair of gloves on because they're really prickly and they bring me out in a bit of a rash, so it may be an allergic reaction, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to take any chances. So I'll dig some gloves out, get those stripped off and then show you the next stage. There we have the two tubs full of comfrey. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a rock on top just to keep it all down and then I'm going to fill them both with water, put the slab on top of the yellow one, put the black one on top of that and then put the lid on. True to form with this channel, nothing ever runs smoothly. It's taken a long time to fill the book up and I realised there's a hole in the bottom. Luckily I've got three or four more up in the other plot so I'm going to go and get one. Check it first of all to make sure it's got no holes in and swap it over. It's Friday, Friday afternoon, just come down after work and uh, what I want to do today is I want to get these pumpkins in. I only sowed them two weeks ago and they've really shot up in the greenhouse so I think it's time for them to go into the ground. So I've got four honey bear, three baby bear and four sunburst and we're going to plant them to grow over the arch. The cucumber that I've put in, one of them is starting to uh, starting to make a bit of a move up the support pole and the other what I thought was a pumpkin I think that's pretty much a courgette so I can stay where it is but I'll, I'll put a uh, pumpkin either side of it. So I'm going to dig the holes, water the holes and then put the plants in. And also the beans that I sowed last Sunday, I've all started to, well not all of them, but the majority of them have started to germinate. So what I've done is a temporary measure. I've just found some bits of mesh put around the outside just to keep the pigeons away, just in case. There's no signs of actions on the uh, Bellotti beans, Bellotti, but they were slow to germinate anyway. So hopefully in a week or so they should start popping up, at which point these should be pretty well established. I could take the mesh away. So I'm just going to get on with planting the pumpkins. raining outside today so I've come into the Palmy Tunnel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the chilly watering system. I did this last year and it worked really well so I'm going to do the same again. It's a pretty simple system. What you've got is you've got a, a small container with a lid that goes on the bottom. You've got the wicking mat. Put the wicking mat into the water, up into the pot and then there's a small hole in the lid for watering and I've uh, got a funnel that just fits in there nicely and then every week or so just top the water up and the chillies take just what they need and they're perfectly happy so I'm going to get on with that now. I've just popped the chilli out of the pot so I can show you there's a hole in the bottom and that's what I pass the capillary matting up into. I split it into two and just spread it across the pot as best I can, trying to get it up the sides. I did this last year with some cheap capillary matting. And although it worked, I think it's going to be a lot better with this high quality capillary matting. And as you can see, the chilies are, are rooting quite well. These are the ones that I didn't think were going to make it. And they all seem to be doing all right at the moment. So there we have the first pot prepared and just spread out the capillary matting like that so it covers as much of the base as I can and I've gone through into the 
into the lid and then that's just going to sit inside the water which will yeah, work quite nicely so I'm just going to pop the plant back in and then fill the tub up with water and that's the first one done I should do the rest and then hopefully by that time the, uh, the rain will have subsided a little bit that's the first one done the lower container is now full of water and I've just watered the top to get it settled in and I'll just leave that and check every week or so just to make sure there's a uh, water in the reservoir and they should be happily growing away all summer let's get the rest of them done now but unfortunately the rain has got worse if anything so it may be the only job that I get done today but it's a job that needs doing so I shall crack on with that all done 12 chimney plants and their self-watering systems pick the 12 best it's not just a lot of materian you get on this channel you also get a bit of construction what we're going to do is I want to trim this slab down to be square I want it to be 600 by 280 because I'm going to take a section of paving out of the second greenhouse and lay this in and then I'm going to create myself a bed that's around about 400 mil which is just over a foot wide by three foot long so what I'm going to do is I've marked both sides I'm just going to go around with a hammer and a bolster both sides and then if all goes well it should split nicely That's the slab that I'm going to take up and replace and then that gives me that short bed there. I've taken the staging down, it was old, I think it had it really, it was all falling apart anyway. So at least it gives me a little bit of extra growing space. And I've literally raked an inch of gravel out of the way and you can see the bindweed. And each, if you snap it off, each one of those little pieces will turn into another plant. So I'm going to go down as deep as I can to make sure I get all the roots out because I don't want to be spending the rest of my days pulling out bits of bindweed. So in that small space there, which is probably two foot square, 60 centimetres by 60 centimetres, that's how much bindweed I've got out. And as you can see, some fairly long roots there so that's going straight on the uh, on the burn pile I've no doubt once I lift this slab up there'll be some more underneath I've pulled the slab up and that is basically a combination of bindweed and mare's tails roots now if I don't dig that out within a couple of days that will all start sprouting so that's the next job Get rid of as much of that as I possibly can to save myself a lot of trouble. That's it all in. I've got uh, the last three peppers. I really had nowhere to put them, so I've just put them in this large pot. They're only uh, going to be small anyway, so they'll be fine in there. So I've got Minnesota Midget, four more peppers, another Minnesota Midget, five tomatoes and four chilies so I think we've made the best use of this little area considering a couple of hours ago it was just used for storing junk and now it's going to be a useful growing space so I think I forgot to film this yesterday but in this little bed here I've uh, brought the arch back from the other plot and I've uh, put three Minnesota midget melons 
each side which I'm hoping to train up the arch and in the center I just had a couple of dwarf French beans that were doing nothing so I've popped them in things are really starting to come together now the allotments looking alive I'm starting to get some crops everything's flowering or fruiting so it's been another busy weekend on the plot and I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope you join me next time and thank you very much for watching I shall see you all next week thank you very much bye